Good morning, everyone. We're just going to give um, folks a few minutes to join us, but um, yeah, we'll get started shortly. I was trying to play this um, playlist for you all as we join, but there's no sound for some reason. So um, I'm just going to have the image up and let y'all take it in and soak it in for yourselves as far as what being yourself means to you. Um, and yeah, we'll get started in a few minutes. But yeah, as we wait for folks to join, um, you know, feel free to get some water, grab a snack if you haven't already had that chance to do so. Um, and we will get started in another minute here. Oh. Alrighty, as I'm seeing, um, there's been a lull in folks joining us. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with our webinar today on mental health advocacy and you know the look that a uh, look into the California's landscape um, from from various uh, locations um, in California, more specifically Riverside County, uh, Los Angeles County, and Anador County. Um, and just double checking, can folks see my screen right now um, with the slideshow and everything? Perfect. Awesome. But yeah, thanks so much for being here today. Feel free to also introduce yourselves in chat if you are joining us um, as attendees. Um, I will first start off by introducing myself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ariela Cuellar. I also go by Ari or she, her, her pronouns. I'm the communication specialist with the California LGBTQ Health and Human Services Network. And I'm very honored to be here in the same space with everyone, with our panelists today, which I'm really excited for you all to hear more about their work and the work that they're doing on mental health in their local communities. Um, so yeah, um, I did want to share some community guidelines before we get started. Um, the first one being uh, to just be thoughtful with your questions. We do have a Q&A function that um, we'll be monitoring throughout today. So if you have any questions for um, any of the work that we're doing or for any of our panelists, please feel free to use that. Um, and also the chat will, um, is also a functionality there. Um, also, please respect pronouns. Um, and then the next one is everyone has a story. So um, just be being mindful of that. Um, you know, be and show up as your authentic self. Um, with that said, I will just disclose that I myself am a little nervous today just because I um, kind of being thrown in to, to facilitate today, but again, I'm excited to be here, um, but I'm just sharing that um, for you all to, to, to know and, and be mindful of. Um, and then just have an open heart and an open mind, um, you know, just be respectful of our panelists and their time. They worked really hard to, to gather this information and share that with everyone today. So. Um, yeah, just wanted to share those. Um, and then I wanted to go over our agenda for today. So um, I'll be sharing next a little bit about the network and some of the work that we do, um, as well as um, go over our for mental health uh, program. Um, and then you'll be hearing from some of our partners that you um, see before you. So um, hearing specifically from our partners in Riverside, in Los Angeles and Amador counties. 
Um, and then we'll move into more of a panel Q&A um, that I will be asking some questions to our panelists. Um, and then we'll move more towards an audience Q&A. So you all can participate and feel free to ask any questions that you may have. Um, and then we'll close it out. So yeah, with that said, um, oh, I also want to just disclose again that the chat will be open for folks to ask any questions. Again, just um, reiterating to, to be respectful of, with any um, comments that you make. Um, and this webinar is being recorded, so um, that will be available and shared out on our YouTube and with other um, with our partners as well to share out as a resource for you and for others. Um, great. So with that said, um, I wanted to just share a little bit about what the network does. Um, this is kind of just like at a glance, but you know, if you wanted to to learn more about the California LGBTQ Health and Human Services Network. Um, please feel free to sign up for our newsletter. Um, we send out a monthly newsletter that um, has a bunch of different resources, um, information, um, events coming up from, from the network and our partners. Um, but before I get into that, so the network seeks to you know, advocate for policies advancing the health of LGBTQ plus communities. We are one of the only statewide organizations that is really working to also implement these policies at a statewide level, um, you know, passing you know bills and legislation is one thing, but actually implementing them and making them happen is another. So that's some of the work that we do specifically with um, you know statewide organizations and advocating really for um, for LGBTQ communities throughout the state. Um, we also work to expand coverage and improve access to quality healthcare. Um, again, that comes with the implementation piece. Um, and then we also work to strengthen programs and build capacity for member organizations. So um, Out for Mental Health is a great example of, of how we do that. We um, partner with other community-based organizations um, and help you know, build their own um, advocacy and programs to better help um, support their communities that they, that they um, work with uh, and, and are a part of. Um, we also work to increase funding for LGBTQ um, health and human services organizations as well. So um, again, this work would not be possible without the many um, organizations that are working boots to the ground, providing the, those direct services. Um, so we specifically help to, you know, increase and advocate for why these organizations should be funded because, you know, without them, a lot of, a lot of this care and a lot of um, these resources wouldn't be um, easily available or, or accessible um, to many, many folks in our community. So yeah, that's just a little bit about what the network does. Um, and then, you know, we also have our Alpha Mental Health Program, which is a statewide um, project that helps to advance um, mental health equity, um, provides resources to build capacity in local LGBTQ plus communities and represents a coalition voice at state level policy discussions. So um, another big part of, of what we do for Alpha Mental Health is, you know, attend um, mental health, the mental health services um, and accountability commission meetings um, and providing public comment so that, um, you know, our recommendations and so that our voices are heard um, at the state level. Again, just continuing to advocate for, better affirming um, mental health services that all of our communities deserve um, to, to have access to. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about the network and, and some of our, our programs and projects. Um, like I was saying earlier, um, I, can, I can link the direct um, webpage where you can go to sign up for our newsletter to learn more or to just, you know, keep in contact and stay updated with everything that we're doing. Um, but yeah, without uh, further ado, I do wanna pass it over to our lovely panelists today and have them introduce themselves. So um, Paulina Angel um, is with the uh, Trans Community Project. Um, Danny Rodriguez is um, with, with the Social Impact Center and um, uh, Megan or Mojo uh, O'Keefe is with the Amador Arts Council. Um, I will also let them introduce themselves um, and a little bit more about the work that they do.
whoever wants to, to go first. I'll go first. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Paulina Angel, um, pronouns she and her. And as a state, I'm um, the executive director of Trans Community Project, which we're based out here in the Coachella Valley. And I'm also uh, one of the co-leads of the Alpha Mental Health um, for uh, Renewal Pride Youth Alliance, which we're based out here in Riverside County. And yeah. <laughs> awesome, thanks Paulina. Thank you, Paulina, for going first. Uh, my name is Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, I'm the Out for Mental Health co-lead for cohort one. Uh, and my day job is I'm a community outreach manager for the Social Impact Center. Um, and I'm passionate about restorative justice, mental health, and LGBTQIA plus rights. Nice. Hey folks, I'm Mojo. I'm the executive director of Amador County Arts Council. I'm an artist and um, a queer kid who grew up in rural United States with a different perspective on what that means. And I'm so honored and grateful to be here today. Thank you so much, Ari. Yes, thank you all so much for being here and you know for taking the time to just share more about what your organizations are doing um, at that local level. Um, and hopefully, you know, share some best practices with other folks wanting to, to join in on this work. Um, so yeah, with that said, I will pass it over to Paulina to, to share more about um, the work that's going on in Riverside County. Um, yes, uh, thank you so much, Ari. Uh, so as I stated, I'm part of both the uh, Renewal Pride Youth Alliance as well as Trans Community Project. A little bit of how both organizations got involved with this is that originally Trans Community Project was supposed to lead for Riverside County, but uh, by the time that our um, our cohort was supposed to begin, I just lost my father to COVID and I realized I didn't have like the bandwidth to really do this. So I pass it on to Reverend Benita and, and her organization, Rainbow Park Youth Alliance, which really made sense because they did do a lot of work with LGBTQ youth. Um, and so I pass it on to them, but then they said like, you know, we'll do this as long as you continue to be part of this as the co-lead. And I was like, sure. So, um, so both organizations are very involved with this. And um, the, the great thing about Rainbow Pride Youth Alliance is like, we not only cater to uh, Riverside County, but we also go into San Bernardino as well, which where our main offices are located at. So we basically serve the entire Inland Empire, which is a very big demographic. Um, um, so uh, next slide. Um, and so this is like our team, like, you know, the person sitting is our great uh, executive director, Reverend Benita. And this is our amazing team that works year round uh, for our, um, for the youth of the Inland Empire. Um, go to the next one. And, um, and so uh, we really didn't set out uh, goals for when we took on this, but except for the main goal, which is serving the youth of the Inland Empire. And uh, we know like how much, especially mental health is, for, is important for youth. Um, uh, considering like, you know, everything that has gone down, especially when COVID happened, um, that, you know, youth basically lost, you know, their community, um, a place to gather. So we did our best throughout the, the pandemic to cater to them by teaming up with uh, Cow Hope and putting together Unity Hope, which is um, a peer crisis counseling service that we provided throughout the pandemic, especially for uh, young adults that we serve. And um, uh, since everything started to lift up, we now provide a support service, support groups out in both Riverside and San Bernardino with the help of the Riverside uh, Public Library, as well as the San Bernardino Library as well. As well as we continue doing uh, Zoom meetings, some support groups as well as also uh, helping youth um, 
navigate um, by either uh, doing visual or um, literal or performance art. You know, we're very big on, you know, doing poetry groups as well as, um, you know, doing painting, you know, uh, the youth that we, that we have, they are amazing artists as well as uh, poets, you know, so it really goes to show like how much, you know, talent that we have out here in this region of the valley. Um, and we also do many other things like, you know, we provide like free binders for, for the, for um, uh, non-binary youth that need them or any kind of uh, youth that, that want to utilize them. As well as, you know, we do like a little bit of trainings on like how to use Narcan, um, as well as other, a lot of other um, aspects of, that's needed to make sure that youth have like a very, you know, positive and um, healthy way of going about their, about their lives. Um, and um, so uh, next slide. And um, the reason why um, we uh, really want to be part of this is because, you know, we felt, we feel that youth tend to be underserved when it comes to the rights of the LGBTQ community. Um, they're usually um, like an afterthought. And so it really uh, makes sense for us to do some type of goal where we focus primarily on LGBTQ youth, because like, you know, a lot of things that we've been seeing, especially in society where I feel like youth is being more attacked more than ever. And um, it really does show, show, especially like, you know, with, you know, what's happening in Texas and, or Florida. Um, and um, youth it, um, has been severely impacted by everything that's been going on in the climate, for instance, um, the great thing about uh, our organization is we are located all throughout the Inland Empire, so we're able to report back to see what's happening in our respective communities. Like, you know, things that might be happening in one part of Riverside uh, might, might not be affecting another part of Riverside. Uh, for instance, um, recently the Temecula Valley School District has voted on a um, on a thing where uh, it requires um, teachers and counselors to out their um, students if they should come to them and tell them that you know I'm um, lesbian, I'm gay, I'm queer, I'm trans. Um, so we know that youth in that area is being impacted more than what's probably going on in the Coachella Valley, and so it really makes really makes sense that we do this work so that um, we know what areas that need the most attention so that we can help out th that youth, those youth around that area. So we do a, lo a lot that we can uh, year round to make sure that youth throughout the entire em in the empire have like a safe space. And we also do this at a pride events as well. We are the ones that also set up a, um, a safe zone for, for youth to be at. So whether if it's Riverside Pride or San Bernardino Pride, which is happening this month, all the way to uh, East Coachella Valley Pride, which happens in October, as well as the greater Palm Springs Pride that happens in November, we make sure that we have a space where we could be able to, you know, have uh, interactions with the youth in that area and provide a safe zone for them. So uh, we're just happy to be a part, part of this uh, initiative and uh, we hope that uh, we continue to do more work uh, for our youth um, as things start to unfold as time goes on. Um, so thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Paulina, for all, all the work that, that y'all are doing especially in Riverside County, which is, you know, more rural area, I would say that, um, you know, a lot of different resources are spread out more. So, um, you know, I, I feel like, especially the youth are, are just forever grateful for um, having these safe spaces. Um, I know, like for myself, um, I would have loved to have like mental health even like talked about or like, 
prioritized in any type of like group setting. So um, if folks have any questions for Paulina, again, we will have um, a Q&A portion towards the end, you know, how to create these safe spaces or how to go about, um, you know, getting um, Narcan support or these art supplies or anything like that. Um, yeah, feel free to use the Q&A function and we'll um, have more Q&A answered um, towards the end of this. But um, yeah, thank you again, Paulina. Um, next up, I believe is Danny to talk more about the work that um, they're doing in the San Fernando Valley. Hello, everyone. Happy Pride. Um, I'm going to be saying this until the end of the month. So <laughs> I just want to invite everyone to, to uh, really take that time to, to celebrate with all the anti-hate that's going on. Um, we we got to really take that time to show some love to one another, respect everyone in our spectrum because we are all a part of this together. Um, and before I get started, I wanted to invite folks to join me in some just some uh, basic breathing. Um, I know there's a lot of things going on in the world. We got to really take that time for ourselves. So um, this is a technique that I learned um, as a mindology fitness uh, trainer. So uh, it's it is called heart mapping, and and everyone can do it. If you got a beating heart, you you can totally join in. Um, for folks that can, um, if you can put your your hand over your heart and one hand on your belly like this, and you're gonna feel your heartbeat. You're gonna close your eyes and feel your heartbeat. And we're just gonna uh, do some natural breath work. Uh, and then I'll I'll then guide us through some um, some guided breath breath work. It's gonna take about five minutes. So just feel your heart beating. Really give this time for yourself. We often hold our negative energy in our stomach and in our gut. So we're connecting with our bodies and we're in control. You are in control and you are powerful. I'm gonna lead us into uh, some guided inhalations. So breathe in through your nose, take a deep breath and try to hold it for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Now exhale. Blow out all the negative energy that you may have. It's the start of the week. You know, you know Mondays. <laughs> so breathe in through your nose. 
and hold it for another five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna do this one more time. Breathe in through your nose and hold it. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale. So we're not gonna deviate from this path. We're gonna do this again, but we're gonna inhale twice. And on the second inhale, your body's gonna let you know when to release. So breathe in, hold it. Breathe in again, hold it, and hold it for as long as you can. Your body's going to let you know when to exhale. And we're going to do this two more times. So breathe in, hold it, breathe in again, hold it. And we're going to do it one more time. Let's think of all of our siblings and our chosen family as we inhale positivity and we exhale the pos uh, we exhale for um, the negativity. So breathe in. Hold it. Breathe in again. Hold it. And when you're ready, you can come back, be gentle with yourself. We're gonna give it a couple more seconds. Thank you so much for joining me. I definitely needed that because um, I too was nervous, you know, <laughs> presenting. Um, and these are just some techniques that we can use uh, in our daily lives to help ease our anxieties and also check in with our bodies. I feel like that's very important to, to have that relationship. Um, and now I'm gonna continue with our presentation. So uh, my name's Danny. Uh, I am the uh, co-lead to cohort one for Alpha Mental Health. And um, the folks that you see here, this is just a, a bit of our cohort. Um, and we're always looking to expand. Um, next slide. So a little bit about uh, uh, what my organization does. So we're the Social Impact Center. Um, we're a nonprofit organization based in Reseda in the Valley, and we focus on community building, storytelling, and education. Um, our, our organization is proudly LGBTQIA-led, 
And we uh, love to be in our communities. We love sharing stories uh, with our community and uh, maintaining that, that preservation uh, in terms of community building. Uh, some programs that we offer uh, throughout the year, uh, we have Abilities Expo, uh, which is a, a health-based uh, traveling exhibition that happens uh, throughout the nation. And we offer things like uh, health education for folks that are uh, navigating that space. Uh, we offer workshops. We have our Coming Out Green workshop, which we took to Creating Change, where we, uh, we used uh, cannabis education uh, and advocacy, and we aligned it with the, in the intersectional work that we're doing in terms of restorative justice. Uh, we have our Know Your Rights. LGBTQIA uh, presentation where we educate folks on the basic uh, rights against discrimination. We have our Mindology Fitness cohort, which is um, the technique that we did, our breathing exercise, but it's it's more of an elaborate, um, very mild, mildly physical, but mostly mental workout where we go inward to reflect. Uh, and um, we then release um, the, our positivity out into the world. Uh, we have our expungement clinics. Of, we're we're a, a, an organization that has a network of legal resources, and we want to empower our underserved communities by helping removing barriers um, in their lives so that we can improve their overall um, well-beings. And then our last two, we have Generation Pride, which is our virtual pride. Uh, that we that we've had where we shared these stories from our community and then uh, lastly we have our grassroots pride uh, from 2019 to uh, 2022 we partnered with Somos Familia Valle and we uh, we had our grassroots pride uh, you know the first one was in North Hollywood Park and then our second one was in Panorama City uh, next slide so a little bit more about our cohort, um, where we realize that mental health is intersectional. Uh, we're a network of artists, uh, community activists, uh, sexual health educators, HIV testing. We have a bi-therapy network, uh, LGBTQIA student-led groups, uh, wraparound services, healthy re rehabilitation centers, job development, um, housing, uh, name changing clinics and bilingual uh, resources for our Spanish speaking community. We're very thankful to have the support uh, from Senator Carolyn Menjivar and their team and local assembly uh, people that come and join our monthly meetings. Um, this is my my bread and butter. Uh, I love like communicating uh, and connecting with fellow uh, uh, members in our in my community. And just sharing resources. Um, what what I mean by uh, mental health is intersectional is that throughout our lives, um, the many resources that we encounter, there has to be some type of mental health uh, component to it. You know, um, folks are at different walks of life, and um, when the help is there, um, it can help improve their lives. Um, so naturally, I, uh, when I was getting ready for this presentation, I casted a poll amongst my cohort, and I did want to just share um, some public comments uh, regarding intersectional mental health. So this is from our community member, our cause. So uh, it says, as a transgender person who volunteers to support other trans people in both West Hollywood and San Fernando Valley, I have seen firsthand the serious mental health challenges that we face. Many trans people in our community struggle with undiagnosed challenges from mild to severe and diagnose serious mental illnesses that go untreated for long periods of time. Instead of seeking help, these trans people use each other as therapists, whether because they cannot afford a therapist, their insurance directory is outdated and difficult to navigate, the wait lists are too long or they're mistreated by one, two or three therapists in a row on account of their gender. 
I know because it has happened to me before. And within our cohort, you know, uh, sometimes it's it gets very serious, but we're we're often we we hold each other accountable, and we try to think of solutions um, in ways to improve folks' uh, mental health uh, standing. Uh, next slide. So um, I just want to shout out Kevin uh, Perez, who's a part of Somos Familia Valle. They are the glue to our cohort. Um, when they asked me to be a, a co-lead, I was absolutely honored uh, to do this work alongside them. Uh, Somos Familia Valle uh, is one of the, the most important LGBTQIA uh, focused uh, nonprofit organizations uh, that I've looked up to, that I've volunteered, um, you know, years before. And so I just really appreciate Kevin um, here is that, that they're here and that they're doing the work. I did wanted to share um, some like statistics that we've, uh, that we encountered with our poll. So uh, we usually ask questions or we have like a like an open dialogue when it comes to that. So um, for folks, um, uh, we've asked folks, uh, have you ever felt like you couldn't talk openly about mental health to your chosen family? And 60% said no. And 40% said yes. Uh, for folks, uh, have, have you ever felt like you couldn't openly uh, talk about mental health in your workplace. And so it was reversed. So 40, 40% 40 uh, said no, and 60% said yes. Um, what I, what I really learned from this too, is like, the more that we talk about mental health, uh, in our communities, the less stigmatized it, it is. And in order to, uh, destigmatize mental health, we really have to be, um, transparent and we have to hold each other accountable. Uh, next slide. So these, um, I won't read all of the all of the quotes, uh, but feel free to read through them. Um, th this also ties into our Q and A that that we're gonna uh, that we're gonna have our panel. Uh, but just for context, uh, why is this work for mental health advocacy important to you and your community? Um, like I mentioned before, we were a network of uh, student-led organizations. We have a bi -ther a therapist network. And then we have, you know, our nonprofit organizations that want to navigate through uh, the mental health. So more of a reason um, to diversify mental health uh, is to understand all the uh, the complexities, the beauty, you know, the um, the pain, the struggle of our, you know, our underserved communities, and it's important to to listen to their stories, to contribute in a positive way, and to uh, to amplify it, you know, to share it, and to um, to love one another. And oh my God, this is my favorite part. So uh, these are photos that I'd love to share of our community doing the work. Uh, we have Natalie from uh, LAVC Pride Center, uh, at Los Angeles Valley College um, at their Pride event that they had during the holidays. And what I realized is like, Pride is only once a month, right? But there are people that that do this work all year round. Um, and it's usually during these holiday times that we need to uplift our communities. So what we do as a part of our cohort that we did last year is we had a Queer Together Winter Banquet where we invited folks from the community to come and celebrate with their chosen family. And, you know, um, with the with the recent like anti LGBTQ, there are over 480 bills that, you know, attack us. And we just want to have that positivity. We, we really just, we always have to fight. And, and in, in these moments, we get to celebrate ourselves and each other. And 
if that, you know, allows us to not think about that, to reduce our anxieties and our, um, and our qualms, we'll be able to um, improve and live better lives. So we have some photos of us uh, right here. That's, uh, that's my little cohort group where our, our young leaders um, that we took to creating change uh, right here on the top. That was from our uh, uh, convening uh, with the network. That was super fun in Sacramento. Uh, we had the stacking cup challenge <laughs> at, uh, at our Queer Together and folks won air fryers. They won goodies for their home. Um, gift cards we gave away a nintendo switch so all, all of it goes back into our community which we love um and then we have our uh right here uh this is from uh san fernando valley pride uh in 2022 in panorama city uh the rainbow is so important right <laughs> um because it includes us all and we also included a mental health um component to it where we had a healing tent with uh, our partners at Radical Women, where we offered sound baths and yoga. Uh, we also did some uh, belly breathing. And uh, there's Nicole from Still Bisexual, uh, always doing the work here in the Valley, uh, expanding their uh, bi therapy network. We have Mission Hills Church, uh, which is the inclusive church in um, in San Fernando Valley. Uh, they always love to come and support us. And the, uh, this is Dejeuner, who led our sound bath. And then I'd love to end it on our, uh, our trans-led Juneteenth cookout that we incorporated into our SFV Pride. Um, it just oh, it melts my heart to see all these smiling faces. And folks just, you know, loving life. We gotta, we gotta live our life to the fullest. Uh, next slide, Ari. So if folks are interested, uh, this is our flyer. Uh, we meet once a month. Uh, it's the last Tuesday of every month uh, between five and six. Uh, and to follow our cohort, um, you can follow us on Instagram. It's SFV out for mental health. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you, Danny. It was so awesome to, and thank you again for, for leading that breathing exercise. I feel like a whole different person right now. So really appreciate you guiding us all in that. Um, but yeah, thank you again, Danny, for sharing all the amazing things that y'all are doing to support mental health resources, expanding that access to folks um, in the San Fernando Valley. Um, please, if you have any questions for Danny, we will um, have a chance to, to answer those towards the end. Um, so feel free to use the Q&A function again. Um, yeah, with that said, last but not certainly not least, um, I will pass it over to Mojo to share more about um, some of the Alpha mental health um, or mental health in general. Um, you know, advocacy that they're doing in Amador County. Hey, 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 folks. Thank you so much for being here today. And thanks for the introduction, Ari. Um, and Daniel and Paulina, you guys are doing such amazing stuff. I'm so honored to be um, presenting with you today. Um, I'm Mojo. Uh, I'm from Amador County, grew up here. And now I'm leading the Amador County Arts Council. Um, and we are a rural community population, just over 40,000 people for the whole county. We are about 45 miles east of Sacramento in the central Sierra Nevadas. Uh, next slide, please. So I like to lead with um, this data project that was produced by the Movement Advancement Project. And I'm gonna actually give you the link in the chat. The rural LGBTQ map has um, LGBT map has wonderful data in there. So if you ever need data about um, rural folks in rural or queer folks in rural spaces, I really recommend this resource. A lot of what we face here in Amador County um, is resistance and repeated attempts to erase our existence 
in, especially in, um, in rural spaces and in country life. The art on this slide was subject to um, criticism by the Amador County Board of Supervisors in May of 2020. Um, it was called Filth. And um, when I came into our gallery every day during this exhibit, I would have to, I would come into the pieces of art turned backwards so that people would not have to look at the content. So um, this art show is called Safe Space and it is currently in its fifth year, but it has met a lot of resistance from um, local citizens and also elected folks. Uh, next slide. So our goals um, with the Out for Mental Health Project and the Amador County um, Task Force are really focused on three main things. Um, like I said, we're facing lots of energy that wants to erase our existence. And so we are striving to normalize um, our presence. And one of the ways we're doing that is one of our task force members, Saladin, is a recent high school graduate of our area. And they are producing an, a series of articles in our local newspaper. I've just given you one of those articles, um, a link to it in the chat. Siladine um, grew up here, is non-binary, and currently does not live in Amador County, but is on our task force um, passionately working to help normalize our community's existence here. Um, and it's really great that the newspaper um, is publishing their articles. It's something that was pretty um, shocking to a lot of us that they didn't block those publications, but they have really made room for us in the newspaper, which is super cool. Um, our task force is also working on some policy advocacy, and we're doing that by um, monthly we meet in Zoom and the citizens who attend get um, trainings, a series of trainings on storytelling and advocacy. Um, we try to support them in making public comments for the school board. Um, we have one school board serving all of the public schools in Amador County, and together we are advocating for the adoption of a policy that supports LGBTQ plus lives and access to mental health. Um, and we are hoping that this policy will be adopted this coming fall, so you can stay tuned for that. Um, and then the other thing we're doing is we're really working to create safe space. Um, Specifically, our task force is attempting to make um, a platform by which people can report incidents of bullying or harassment so that the uh, the data on the incidents is not lost, because what we're finding is that when we when we call the sheriff's office, um, we are heard and then the information is just lost somewhere. We'd like to be able to keep track of those experiences. And, you know, there's no um, safe space for queer folks. There's no community art center in this, in this county. So we're really hoping to establish space like that. Um, next slide. So, like I said earlier, we're in the fifth year of the Safe Space Art Show. This art show was uh, developed in response to um, BIPOC and queer youth who reported to us um, feeling invisible and unwelcome in our rural community. So five years ago, we started this art show um, in defiance of our board of directors at the time, who didn't think that we should be doing anything queer, even though I'm totally queer. And <laughs> so here we are five years later. Now this art show is in partnership with several agencies, including the Amateur County Department of Behavioral Health. Woohoo, go them. Um, resisting their board of supervisors in some ways, I suppose. Um, and also the show is traveling to our sister counties, Calaveras and Tuolumne. It's a fabulous show currently open in Jackson at Sierra Wind Wellness Center, where the art that has been entered um, is the age range is from six to 84. Um, and it's a really lovely art show. Uh, Tuolumne and Calaveras are still engaging their artists in um, 
calling out to them to add to the show. And this will be going on through August. So I hope that you all take some time to go visit um, the Central Sierras and see our lovely art show. Next slide. Um, and then, so our main ask, yes, we want you to be involved and I will give you my um, email address and you can reach out to us and let us know when you're coming to visit the Central Sierras. But the truth is California is mostly rural. And so our main ask of all of you is that you get connected with your rural spaces, um, especially if you're in the middle of a big city. I know there's a rural community near you. And I promise you, there are queer kids who don't have queer role models living in rural spaces all over the country. Um, I can't even begin to tell you the impact of going to small towns and being your fabulous self. Not only does it um, provide role models to youth, but it also provides some relief to adults who are queer adults who are living in rural spaces and feeling isolated or unwelcome or invisible sometimes. So just go visit your rural spaces and know that there's a ton of people there. They might be in the corners or the nooks and crannies, but we welcome you to come be with us in our rural homes. Um, I'll put my email in the chat and thank you so much. That's it, Ari. Yeah, thank you, Megan. Um, yeah, Mojo, you're definitely a testament to, you know, just um, the fact that although California is seen as such like, uh, you know, uh, progressive, inclusive uh, state compared to, you know, the rest, um, there are still places um, throughout, you know, geographically that are not as open minded or, you know, feels like they're living 20 years back. So, um, you know, thank you for sharing that. Um, just how, how important it is to to go and be visible in those rural spaces um, because you're definitely not the only one. And I'm sure others really um, just appreciate that uh, visibility. Um, so yeah, now that um, we have our panel, uh, now that um, folks are done with their individual presentations, we're gonna switch gears on into more of a panel Q and A discussion. Um, so my first question is um, for Paulina and Mojo, um, and that is, you know, how has this work positively affected your local community um, in other ways um, that apart, as, apart from what you just shared? I like to think that, um, well, not think, um, but I've seen, um, you know, just a the smile on the faces of uh, of the youth that we you know work with uh, to help help out their mental health. You know, it's like it really does give them like a nice fresh breath uh, breath of fresh air, and you know, it just um, just seeing them like you know smile and having their head lift up, you know, knowing that there's people out there that's looking out for them and that just uh, makes it all worthwhile in the work that, that we do. And um, and so that's all I, I could really say, just like, you know, youth needs positivity nowadays. And, you know, especially like, you know, what, you know, Daniel has been saying, like with all the 480 bills that's going on, it could be very overwhelming. And so just knowing that Youth knowing that there's people out there that's fighting for them um, really makes it worthwhile, you know, that we're out there for them. I've had similar experiences, Paulina. And, you know, I for our, our rural community, 10 years ago, there was not really much going on in way by ways of queer visibility in this county. And um, we're so small, um, the chatter was like, oh, well, there's this, there's this one guy who puts on this one thing. Um, but what's happened in the last couple of years is that we're growing, our community is growing. And a couple of agencies now are engaged in queer affirming activities so that it's not just one person flying the pride flag. Now there's a bit of a, a momentum building and it's been really beautiful to see that there are 
three or more pride events happening in Amador County this year, that there are pride events happening in Calaveras County. Um, it, it, when I moved back here after going away for college and coming back in my 30s, to find that really nothing had changed was alarming. But the change that has happened over the last um, 10 years, especially the last three years, has been really, really inspiring. And I know that, yes, many of us are still not necessarily feeling safe. And no, we don't have a community space that where we know we are safe, but we feel safer today and more welcome today and more included than we did just three years ago. And that's pretty rad. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, just the small differences make huge changes. Like, like you said, it used to be just that one person who would host that one event or like uh, the main person that, that folks um, would hear that from. And now to know that that's kind of like spreading and slowly making change uh, amongst like local agencies and organizations is, is also great and amazing to hear um, from Paulina as well, just like how ap appreciative the youth and community is for, you know, you all just being present and, and providing, you know, that safe space. And um, I also add something in as well. I also like to say that I am very, very happy myself with how uh, youth are nowadays, especially when it comes to um, the LGBTQ community, because, you know, like they're the ones, this new generation, Generation Z, they are the ones that are really being out there even more, make sure that LGBTQ people have the spaces needed for, um, to be themselves. And uh, picking back to uh, some of the work that we do, well, something that Rural Pride Youth Alliance as well as Trans Community Project been involved with is the East Coachella Valley Pride. Now that pride was not put together by organizations, but it was put together by the youth. The youth are the ones that went out and did the research and said, said to you know, the powers that be like, hey, we want a pride. We need these resources. Can you make this happen? So it's really, it, it really, it's really uh, affirming to see that, you know, like youth have really have their finger on the pulse of what's going on in society. And they're the ones that's gonna really move things forward into the future. Yes, yeah. No, thank you for saying that, Paulina. I feel, I definitely believe that the youth are the future and um, I definitely see a lot of progress and hope for, for them as far as like making even more change that we're seeing today. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, my next question is, um, what are the challenges and barriers that, that y'all are experiencing and how are you navigating these issues? Um, may, I, may I speak? Yeah, please. Oh, thank you. Um, so specifically in San Fernando Valley, uh, one of our biggest goals that we have in, as our cohort is to create an LGBTQIA uh, plus inclusive space, a center. Um, there, the the valley is pretty big, <laughs> and that's um, what what's I think really difficult is especially for youth. Um, and since California is essentially a car culture, you, you have to have a car, or, you know, uh, to get around. Um, public transportation is extremely limited. Um, it often takes uh, around 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes to get to uh, the, the nearest LGBT center. And that's in Hollywood. Um, and our goal is to create something that is uh, more central. Um, so that folks in the valley don't have to go, you know, uh, they don't have to trek that long way to have access to resources. Um, because, you know, when, when we're closer to home, um, we have that greater peace of mind, right, to pl plan out our day or <laughs> to, you know, really um, figure it out. And um, that that is a challenge. 
Um, I mean, and the more obvious one too, you know, COVID uh, with the pandemic and everything, when we shut down, uh, we pivoted and we, you know, we adapted to virtual meetings, but, you know, a couple of years into the, to this pandemic, people are zoomed out there, <laughs> the, you know, people are pulled in all these different directions. And if we can provide, you know, a solid space uh, where folks feel safe, um, that, that, that would be a, uh, a barrier that we would overcome, I feel like, uh, to include more people and to have more folks uh, uh, obtaining these resources. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. Um, Mojo or Paulina, did, did either one of you want to add to any of the challenges you're experiencing and how you're currently navigating? All right, I'll share about it. Um, so, I mean, the challenge can be the some people, including elected people, don't want queer plus folks here or don't believe that we're here. So how do we navigate that? Aside from trying to normalize, um, we're also trying, we're doing that by having more and more partnerships. So it's not just the County Department of Behavioral Health. It's also the Tri-County LGBT Alliance and the, the three counties art councils and um, recovery centers. So we're trying to make more and more and more partnerships and participate in each one of those groups so that um, we're all kind of helping each other do the work of normalizing and showing up in, in a normal way. Um, the other thing that we're doing is kind of ignoring the people that are trying to, um, erase us. So, um, it can be really, uh, challenging and there are definitely days where exhaustion sets in, but, um, just continuously showing up and, and as our fabulously queer selves, um, and being willing to talk about the elephant in the room, um, and just keep going regardless of what uh, the good old boys and gals say is definitely um, a tactic that seems to be working. I think that five years ago when we started Safe Space, there were a lot of well-meaning people who were afraid on our behalf. Um, I think there were a lot of people who thought this art show would go away um, and they've tried to facilitate that either by not donating anymore or not being involved as a volunteer. Um, but it has already, although we are small, it has already grown beyond the control of any one person. And so there's a, a collective of individuals who um, care about this art show in a, enough to say that it's not going to go away. Half of the entries are from youth so um, the need is is clearly clearly real, um, and one thing that relates to that is you know Amador County has the highest rate of self harm in the state of California, according to the Cal Public Health um, data, um, and so the mo the majority of those self harm incidents are youth. Um, and so by us, um, to kind of circle around to what Paulina said, by continuously showing up to build trust-filled relationships with the youth, um, we are hoping to nav navigate that challenge. Yeah, all, all really, you know, relevant issues that I'm sure are happening elsewhere and, um, you know, as, as long as we continue to show up and provide, you know, a safe space and a home for, especially for youth and just other LGBTQ folks in our areas, I think, you know, slowly making progress to, to combat these barriers, um, especially around mental health um, and how to support that. So thank you both for sharing. Um, my next question is, if someone wanted to get involved in the advocacy that y'all are doing, um, you know, with any of, of the projects or programs you, you may have, how should they go about, you know, uh, reaching out? Uh, do they contact you directly or is there a special sign up list that y'all have? Um, feel free to, free to share. 
Yes, it's um, basically like, you know, visiting us on 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 our websites and um, I mean, like there's a, always like a contact um, option right there. So please feel free to, you know, to reach out to us. You know, like we're, I, I'm pretty sure like all their organizations here are always looking for people to be there with them to, um, to you know, like do some volunteer work or to get involved in other things that we're doing. Um, you know, like we, like, you know, as they say, you know, strength, st strength by numbers, you know, and so the more people that that's there helping us with this work, the better, so that it makes it easier for us to get all these stuff done. Um, so that's, if you want to contact me, that's one way right there, um, as well as like our respective websites as well. So go out and reach out to us. We're always happy to have more people there uh, with us. Uh, thank you, Ari, for sharing our uh, our emails. Uh, that is my best uh, contact information. But I'd say um, we you got to get into the community. You know, you got to you got to like be present with us in, in, in this moment. And I know, like I, I mentioned it before, but pride does not stop, you know, after June 30th. It, like we're we're here and we're not going anywhere. And that's the that's what I want to leave with folks. Um, with, there are several organizations within our communities where we can go and volunteer. Um, and like Paulina mentioned, I just want to echo strength in numbers. Um, we gotta we gotta build this together. It honestly it honestly takes a village um, to help support one another. And as we build these networks, um, we then identify the strengths, the um, the compassion, the um, the empathy that we have uh, to to help elevate our communities. Absolutely. And then, Megan, did you have a preferred contact or was the one I left in chat for, for you to folk, for folks to reach out and everything? Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Ari, for doing that. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. And then um, I do have one last question and then we'll move on to, um, I think I see a few questions in the Q&A, but folks think of any others. We're moving on to, to that portion next. Um, but my last question is, you know, what can mental health allies within counties, within school boards, at the state level, you know, what can they do to support the work that you're trying to achieve? Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave it open to, to whoever wants to chime in. It's very important, especially when it comes to um, educational institutions to, um, to really, um, want to uh, work with us on these projects and um, we're always open to work, work working with you know school districts to make sure that you know their students um, have like a space um, that they feel that you know they could you know not only be themselves but to talk to other people so it's uh, we encourage we encourage you know any kind of institution whether it's schools or um, uh, health providers, um, even, you know, people like, you know, the, like police and firefighters and first responders kind of people to reach out to us. We're always willing to collaborate with people. And that's the biggest thing, you know, like collaboration. And, you know, like, as long as like, you know, we're all working together on a goal, um, to better, um, better um, serve our communities, you know, the best. So, you know, we welcome it, you know. Um, I think that in rural spaces, especially right now, um, allies are growingly essential, um, especially in a small rural community where um, citizens risk being in the spotlight too much and that that can jeopardize their safety. If there's only a, a three people making public comment, um, it can it can be a challenge 
to um, keep that safety. And But if straight allies step up to the plate, that could really help us right now in our rural community. I think we get, um, we get disvalued, but uh, in some ways, if straight allies step up to the plate, they have mm, less of a personal investment in, in the work. Uh, and I do believe they, I, I watch them get listened to more deeply by the elected folks. So um, get connected, straight allies, please. We'd like your help. Oh, thank you, Mojo and Paulina. Um, I feel like um, for especially allies, um, cause that's, you know, we're, we're treading those waters um, to not be dismissive uh, of our history um like it's not it's not a joke it's not you know th this is very serious there's so many of our queer ancestors that have fought so hard to get us to where we are now um and it's not it's not something to play around with um and allies what you know i i'm very privileged to to have uh folks in my in my biological family who are very supportive and I know that that's not the case, um, you know, for my siblings, my for my chosen family. Um, and what I would love to do is to spread this love more around, uh, spread our education uh, in order to teach our allies, you know, the, like this is where we come from. This is the, these are our roots. And um, yeah, uh, I was recently at a, a the first ever, I, I'm not typically a religious person, but I went to a pride mass uh, where all the folks that were there were LGBTQ identified and um, to share space with them and the and the allies that were there, you know, the, the people that, that visit uh, the church frequently to, to have that support. Uh, it's, it's such an indescribable energy, you know, the who doesn't like to feel supported. And, you know, it doesn't take a lot of effort to, to be nice or to have compassion uh, in our communities. Yeah, definitely. Well said. And yeah, all it really takes is just, you know, being a kind, decent human, which is not, it doesn't seem like a lot to ask for, but nowadays, you know, you never know. But thank you all so much for, for answering those questions, you know, very thoughtfully and um, you know, hopefully any allies that are on here know how to connect with you now and get engaged in this work because um, we definitely need allies and accomplices to actually go out and do, um, take action and, and, and create change. So um, thank you all so much for, for answering those questions. Um, I do want to acknowledge some, some of the Q&A that we've got trickled in now. So um, I see Danny answered one um, as far as how how we go about um, collaborating with school districts. Um, and Danny said that uh, at the Social Impact Center, they collaborate with student-led organizations. Um, their cohort includes Strength United, Reclaim Our Schools, Burbank YMCA, social, uh, the Social Impact Center, and uh, student activists. So that is awesome. Um, Paulina or Mojo, do you all engage at all with, with school districts or wanna address that question? Um, and if, if not, that's also totally fine. Yeah, um, so uh, we've been um, able to connect with the Riverside County Board of Education. And um, that was a great thing too, because of what happened back in, I wanna say it was late March, early April, uh, they tried to put forward a uh, resolution that's basically mirrored uh, Assembly Bill 1314, which was that thing where it would require teachers and counselors to out their um, to out their uh, students to their parents. And uh, luckily, uh, they reached out to some of some of us, and we were able to, out, to go out there and basically talk why uh, something like this is is more will do more harm for students then good, you know? And so um, they listened to us and then they struck it down. You know, they said like, you know, you're right. This is not the best way to go about things. 
this this shouldn't be happening. So it's really good to see that you know they're reaching out, we're reaching out, coming together to make sure that you know the youth are protected. Um, so um, I'm glad that you know school districts and board of educations in different counties are willing to reach out to us, you know, and get it, get our opinions on certain things that's happening. Um, with regard to working with school board or school districts. Um, so I think that the door was open to us because we provide the school district with something they need, which is free art classes. And we've been doing that for over 10 years. Um, by doing that, we've been able to establish um, relationships with the school district at all levels. So we have relationships with the superintendents. We also have relationships with teachers at every single school site and principals at every single school site. So um, basically, I would the advice I would give is one on one conversations and building authentic relationships is how you are going to get into really collaborating with the school district. So I train the citizens on making public comments and I give them storytelling techniques and the citizens go and do those public comments. Meanwhile, myself and other people in the office are having one-on-one -on -one conversations with superintendents, principals, uh, teachers, parent teacher groups. Um, and I think kind of that broad uh, 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 approach, getting to the district from all those different le uh, levels and really leading with human-centered authentic relationships is the key. Yes, definitely. I've definitely heard time and time again, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And like, in this case, it's definitely, you know, all about creating those connections and stuff. So thank you so much for, for y'all for answering that question. Um, and then someone else just asked um, if there was an Orange County cohort. Um, I believe we just got an Orange County cohort and I believe it's the Metamorphosis Medical Center. Um, so Maureen, if you did want to drop your, um, Maureen if, is the one who answered or who asked the question. If you want to drop your email in the chat, um, I can follow up with you directly um, and, and share more about how to get engaged with the Orange County cohort and some of the activities that they'll be doing shortly. So um, yeah, and thank you, Danny, again. We do have some time left for questions. Um, so we have about 10 minutes left. If anyone else has anything that they're wondering or or want to know more about from from the folks representing their counties here um, or just in general about our mental health um, program you know please now is the time <laughs> oh perfect kai is here representing the orange county cohort hi kai um, so they left their their email there maureen hopefully y'all can connect um, uh, but either way, um, yeah. Oh, awesome. A lot of Orange County folks here today. Cool. Um, well, not, not seeing any other questions come up. Um, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. And again, thank you so much to our panelists today, Mojo, Danny, and Paulina for sharing more about, you know, the advocacy work that y'all are doing, which is so, so important. Um, I know, you know, it feels like um, you're chugging along an uphill battle all the times, um, but you know there's folks here today that that join that want to learn more and support you all. And um, you know we'll definitely keep resharing, keep promoting, um, you know all of the events and things that you all have going on because it's super important for our communities to to be engaged. But um, any parting words from from y'all before we hop off? Oh, no. thank you thank you all so much thank you everyone have a great um rest of your week and happy pride <laughs> thank you so much for uh, having us today i'm happy to, we're all happy to be here and uh and know that we see your true colors and it's beautiful like the rainbow so. yes <laughs> yes. I love that. <laughs>
great. Well, happy Pride, y'all, and have a good rest of your week. Happy Monday.